human rights are the rights one simply has by virtue of being human. They are grounded in the presumption of the equal worth and dignity of all human beings. Recently, there have been several high-profile human rights issues in Canada, such as assisted suicide, uh, children welfare services on First Nations reserves. You might have also heard of Quebec's face covering law, which came into effect just a few, few weeks ago. In my short funded research, I'm investigating how municipal planning can be balanced with human rights. This is an area of litigation that is on the rise even while little research exists on this topic. This research is being conducted in collaboration with a law faculty here at the University of Alberta, a practicing lawyer in Toronto, and a human rights advocate in Edmonton. So you see two images on the screen up here. Which one would you consider a human rights issue? Urban chicken? The tent city? Both? Or maybe none? We'll talk about that in a second. In Canada, the Charter, along with human rights legislation, provide the basic mechanism and legal framework for the idea of right to the city. Right to the city finds support in two other important documents. The 2006 European Charter for the Safeguarding of Human Rights in the City and the UNESCO UN Habitat Project of 2006 that elaborates on the rights set out in 1948 UN's Universal Declaration of Human Rights. In Canada, there are increasing number of human rights cases related to the city, such as municipal bylaws that regulate group homes, advertisements on municipal properties, the use of public spaces, housing, and rental suites. These cases have serious implications on how city planners function and how they ensure that the local bylaws are inclusive and constitutionally sound. And I'll briefly elaborate on three such cases. First one, I call it urban chickens in Calgary. So this is uh, Mr. Hughes. He kept chickens in the backyard of his residential property in the city of Calgary, which was in violation of the city's bylaw that prohibits keeping of livestock. The defendant's position was that impugned legislation was unfair and that hence should be allowed in the city, just like cats and dogs. He argued that the bylaw was affecting his right to make decisions about what he eats, what he grows, what he produces, in breach of his charter and human rights. The city, on the other hand, argued that having a livestock like raising chickens are considered a nuisance in terms of noise, orders, and accumulation of waste. The court found that the defendant was guilty and ruled that the bylaw was not infringing upon the defendant's charter rights. The second case is about rental suites. A BC court heard a charter challenge to a zoning bylaw of Delta BC that restricted rental suites in a single detached homes, and it restricted it to only those who, who were the owners of, of, the, of the homes. The applicants challenged the bylaw as discriminatory and contrary to the charter. And the court found that the bylaw did indeed constitute unlawful discrimination and the municipality exceeded its authority in passing and enforcing the bylaw. The last one, the tent city. So in the tent city case of Abbotsford, BC, the BC court decided about a conflict over the management of public city space. Who does this space belong to and who gets to use it? The court said the homeless have a constitutionally protected right under section seven of the charter to erect a temporary shelter and sleep overnight in parks. So this project will analyze municipal plans, community standard bylaws, zoning bylaws of municipalities across the country to look for any potential human rights violations, analyze recent court and tribunal decisions, and lastly, conduct interviews with legal and planning staff in select municipalities. Now, why does it matter? 
inconsistency with human rights legislation and the charter is a serious constitutional and legal violation. It has potential for serious implications for municipalities. And above all, it is a moral issue. A successful legal challenge could make a bylaw void. So the findings of this research could lead to significant changes to municipal bylaws and hopefully contribute to more inclusive cities and planning practice. Thank you.